Just beware, grab your snack, grab your drinks. I am also wearing these ears to compensate for the fact that we are Grinches, apparently, and I don't own any Santa hat. Hello, my greeting friends. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Melanie, and Merry Christmas, everyone. The day I am uploading this, it is Christmas Day, so I hope all of you are having the greatest of days, and that every single one of you is in the holiday, in the Christmas spirit. Tonight, we also have sprints at 7 p.m. EST, so y'all better be ready. Y'all better have your drinks, and your food, and your books, because it's bound to be a great time. Today, I bring you a huge Christmas book haul, and that is all thanks to you. I can never say this enough. All of you are so incredibly generous and kind and the amount of books that I've been receiving for these past few weeks has just been absolutely overwhelming so thank you from the bottom of my heart for every single one of you because you definitely do not need to. In this video we're gonna have a mix of everything, books that I bought myself, arcs or finished books that I got from publishers and also a lot of gifts from you. That really encompasses the majority of this video so I hope you all are ready for a really massive book haul and we're gonna be hauling, you already know it by the title, 54 books and there's just a lot of things to be thankful for this year all of you being just incredibly supportive and not even just by going into the wish list but by subscribing and by liking the videos and engaging with them and commenting and joining the live streams y'all are just the nicest people ever and i truly do feel like we are a little family and i just absolutely love that because since day one i had no expectations but i always knew that whatever came of having a booktube channel i just wanted it to feel like family and i just wanted it to feel like community and i feel like that's exactly what we are. I'm already tearing up. So thank you so, so much for all the milestones. Oh my God, I should have had tissue paper with me or something for every comment, for every share, for every like, for just being here and being so incredibly supportive because you guys just mean the world to me. And I'm so, so happy that I decided to start this channel on a very by the seat of my pants decision at midnight at the start of July. And going into the classic disclaimer, if you have yet to subscribe to my channel, don't forget to do so down below for more bookish content, constantly uploading videos that I'm sure you do not want to miss and I am also live streaming throughout the week which is always tons of fun and you can also follow me on all of my social medias which are always linked down below. I have a Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads and again as most of you know an Amazon wish list which you guys really just need to stop attacking. And yeah without further ado this video is gonna be long. I already know it. Let's get right into it. I'm gonna start with books that I think y'all haven't seen that I have bought myself and that I really haven't talked about that much. So let me just start with those. Let me just talk about this one right off the bat because I do have a vlog where I talked about this book very in depth because I did read this in a 24 hour readathon and I'm talking about The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. Look at this, the red book, the red lip. I read this, it was a five out of five stars. I enjoyed this so, so much. And I'm not even gonna tell you exactly what this book is about because I've already talked about this book enough as it is. And I'll just refer you to my 24 hour reading vlog where you can see the synopsis, my thoughts and everything. Although this is the second book in the series. And I decided to get myself a few romance books slash like contemporary. I bought myself these three books, which I have only read one out of the three, and that is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Wong. This was another five-star read for me. This wasn't my five-star predictions, and I honestly loved this book. Like, it was super steamy. It was super interesting to read about. There is representation in here because not only is one of the main characters half Vietnamese, half Swedish, but we also have Stella, who's our main character, and she has Asperger's, and she has made a very strong career for herself, coming up with algorithms to predict customers purchases and she has earned a lot more money than she really intended to that she really doesn't know what to do with and so since her parents continuously nag her about going out and dating and being out in the world she decides to actually hire a male escort to teach her the ways of dating it was also a very quick read so this one is definitely one that I enjoyed quite a lot I also bought myself another red book apparently and it is Simon versus the homo sapiens agenda by Becky Albertalli I have heard a lot of great things about this book and then right around the time that I bought this book Book, everyone was saying that the book wasn't that good so I don't know what to think of this I don't really know what this book is about I just know that a lot of people love it and it says 16 year old and not so openly gay Simon Spear prefers to save his drama for the school musical oh wait I didn't know that this had like a musical element to it now I'm excited about this when an email falls into the wrong hands his secret is at risk of being thrust into the spotlight so it also has like a multimedia element I love anything that has to do with emails and like contemporaries and romances that actually sounds kind kind of interesting and it does sound like the stakes are pretty high for a contemporary so I do know I'll end up reading this at one point because I mean I did spend my money on this. Another romance that I got myself is actually Beach Read, Beach Red. I'm pretty sure it's Beach Read and this is by who? Emily Henry. This is by Emily Henry. I actually wanted to read this around the time where I got it but I really 
do feel like it'll be a perfect book for the beginning of 2021. And I do know we follow two authors who go into a retreat and they actually dare each other, right? to switch genres and try to write each other's novels. And I also know there's a lot of familial dynamics in this book from what I've heard. And I know a lot of people haven't really liked this book because of that. But if you know me, I love me a good familial dynamic despite the genre that I'm reading in. A book that I have actually already read and loved. It was a five stars for me. It was just an absolutely incredible read. And I also kind of hauled this in a reading vlog. But it is These Violent Lights by Chloe Gong. I did get this from Book of the Month. And as you can see, it's stabbed, it's loved. I read it. it is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in the 1920s in Shanghai and we follow rivaling gangs and Juliet and Roma who again come from said rival gangs and it is kind of like magical realist and fantasy there is a monster and these two people will have to set their rivalry aside in order to conquer this ongoing mystery this ongoing threat that is taking everyone from both sides of the war there's political intrigue in here a lot of chemistry between these two characters an add-on that I got from Book of the month that I actually have yet to read. I am saving this for Winterween. I think I'll fit this in during Winterween in January. And it is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This does have one of those tropes that I really enjoyed watching and reading about. And it is the trope of a book inside a book. Follow Maggie who doesn't believe in ghosts. She doesn't believe in anything supernatural or paranormal. But when she was younger, she actually lived in this manner alongside her dad and her mom. And her dad actually wrote like a memoir of every single bad experience experience that he had inside this house. She never believed that those things were actually reality. And so when she goes back to that manor to flip it in order to sell it, she starts experiencing things that may prove her wrong and may just prove that her father actually writes all along. So again, a book within a book, I know we're gonna get chapters from the novel and then chapters present time following Maggie and that I love to read about especially in thrillers. I actually also went on like a binge buy of like middle grades because I was planning a middle grade reading vlog that never actually ended up happening in 2020. So 2021 will definitely be the year okay I'll stay on top of my game and I have actually bought myself these middle grades that I definitely want to get into read for that vlog. So I first off have Furthermore by Tahira Mafi. As you know I love Tahira Mafi in here and I actually haven't read any of her middle grades. I know she has this one and then she has, I think it's Witchwood, Winterwood, one of the two, but these covers are stunning and I actually played myself because the hardcovers for these are even more stunning. And again, I have been buying books that I don't entirely know the synopses for, so this is what it says in the back. In a world made entirely of magic and color, Alice stands out for all the wrong reasons. It's been almost three years since the day father disappeared from Farinwood with nothing but a ruler in his pocket. But Alice Alexis Queen's Meadow is determined to find him. The synopsis keeps going. I don't think I need to keep going. I think we get the gist of it. There's a mystery. She goes on a quest. She is not magical, so perhaps there will be some magical reveal at some point in the book. I love Tahira Mafi's writing, and I'd love to explore that in middle grade. Then I bought myself an oldie but a goodie, a true classic in middle grade, and that is A Series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket, the first book, The Bad Beginning. And this is so cute. Like, it's so tiny, and it also has deckled edges. I don't if you guys can see that but I do vaguely know we follow these kids after a big tragedy happens and that is where the whole mystery starts developing where somebody tries to steal their fortune and I think this is kind of like a sadder read from what I have heard so again just like that thrilling mystery aspect somebody is out to get these kids so they have to like defend themselves in some way or another another one that I don't really know a lot about but I think it was Reagan from Peru's project who said that if you enjoyed Percy Jackson this was quite similar to that but it was was very very underrated and it is actually the Adventurers Guild. This is by Zach Lauren Clark and Nick Eliopoulos. There's a quest in here, there's found family, there is something that was never meant to happen that will change these kids lives and it seemed very underrated but again that comparison to Percy Jackson is definitely what got me. And then last but not least in the middle grade section we have Nevermore actually and this is by Jessica Townsend and the first book is The Trials of Morgan Crow. Morgan Crow is cursed, born on Eventide, the unluckiest day for any child to be born, Morrigan is blamed for all local misfortunes, and worst of all, the curse dooms her to die at midnight on her 11th birthday. Morrigan must compete in four dangerous trials against hundreds of other children, or she'll have to confront her deadly fate. I feel like quests are very, very common in middle grades because it's definitely something more exciting. It's something for kids to engage in. So I definitely enjoy myself a good quest. It's what I grew up reading. And then there's magic in here. There is this very mysterious figure that I'm guessing is gonna be powerful 
powerful that whisks Morrigan away. And this just seems like an all around really cool, high stakes, magical story that again, for middle grade, I'm there for. These need no introduction. These need no synopsis. So I'm gonna keep it short and sweet because I can already babble about these books way too much. And the live show for the first book is actually this Sunday, December 27th at 5 p.m. EST. If you want to join us and chat about A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. I bought myself the first and the second book because I just had to have them physically. And these are actually really, really expensive in the new covers. So we have the first one, A Court of Thorns and Roses, and then the second one, A Court of Mist and Fury. I actually never seen these books in person regardless of the format that they were in, the old covers or the new ones, but Akumov is chunky. They're just a stunning moment in person. I know I said that I didn't like the new covers, but now that I have them, I'm like, I, I'm vibing with them. But just know we are hosting a Thorns and Roses along, which is a read along for the entire A Court of Thorns and Roses series, leading up all the way to the release of the newest book, A Court of Silver Flames. And our first live show for the first book, which is A Court of Thorns and Roses, is this Sunday. If you want to join us, it'll be here on my channel. And those were actually all the books that I bought myself. So now I'm gonna actually move on to books that you guys have sent me. So thank you for every single one of you who decided to send me a gift. Just thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart because again, you guys truly don't need to, but everything is much, much appreciated. And so to follow the last two books that I showed you, this was just something that I was not expecting, but actually one of you got me the last two books that I needed in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. And this was just overwhelming because I know that these books are not cheap. So thank you so much to Diana who got these for me. Diana got me A Court of Wings and Ruin and then A Court of Frost and Starlight, which I definitely appreciate because I actually have never read A Court of Frost and Starlight. And in classic Diana fashion, she says, Merry Christmas, mamas, which I absolutely love that she says that. And then the other gift note says, can't wait for turtle milk <laughs> from Diana. Next up, I have a gift sent to me by Camila from Borrows and Books. She has her own YouTube channel, so I will leave it linked down below. And it is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. And the gift note says, I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. It was my favorite read of 2019. And once you read it, please shoot me a DM because I'd love to discuss it from Camila. And I most definitely will because I am very, very intrigued by this book. And I do know we have an academy setting. I think it's a private school. And we follow these girls after they are put under quarantine because a threat is out to get absolutely everyone. That is all that I need to know to get into this book. I truly want to keep this synopsis to the bare minimum because I do want to go into this a little bit more blindly. But I guess in here we'll have a little bit of like body horror, like gore, because by the looks of the cover, it won't really be pretty. So thank you so much to Camila for getting this for me because I just, I'm mush, I'm mush, I'm, I'm sappy, okay? Following the theme of Truly Devious, Mare actually sent me this book, again from Mare Reads, and she actually sent me the hand on the wall because she said, and I will read out the note she sent me, after all of the Truly Devious talk in the live tonight, again, everything happens on the live, I thought you needed this for when you finish book two. This is one of my fave series I've read this year and I wanted you to have it. Much love and happy holidays from Mare. Honestly, Mare, thank you so, so much for getting this for me because I was desperate to get the entire trilogy. You were indeed right. I finished the second book. I wanted to throw that out the window and I immediately picked up the third one. So, you know, you're a real one, Mare. I have two books that were sent to me from Books and Her Cat over on Instagram. And the first one was actually one that I also read in my last 24 hour reading blog. So again, I will leave that linked down below in case you want to see all of my thoughts. And it is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I'm just really thankful that Kat got this for me. And the little note says, The Poet X is one of my favorite books of all time. And I know you really loved it as well. Hopefully this one is just as good. So honestly, Kat, thank you so much for sending this my way because I definitely loved it. It's really, really tabbed. Kat has also gotten me Lovisona by Romina Garber. And oh my God, like, thank you so much because I am genuinely so excited for this book. I've been wanting to read this for literally forever. And not only that, but it's inspired in Argentinian folklore and it does have themes of like immigration and family and discovering yourself. It's so pretty without the dust jacket. Oh, oh my God. Whenever I saw this for the first time, I was like, oh my God, without the dust jacket, it's so pretty. And Kat says, hi Mel, I just discovered your channel and been to your videos. I'm really loving your content. Loisona is also a book high on my TBR, so I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so, so much for all of your kindness. And I do know in this book, we follow Manuela who lives in Miami with her grandma and her mom. And once tragedies start to happen and everything goes awfully wrong, she actually needs to go on the run from this very sheltered, very odd life that she has been living. As Manu starts investigating, she actually finds 
finds this very sacred community that her father I believe was involved in and in this underground world she actually finds creatures that are very much fantastical and Manuela never thought existed. I am planning a little something with some Latinx books so y'all better be ready for that because it's definitely going to be a very special one for me and I'm just excited for y'all to see all the content of 2021 which includes indeed Lovisona. I am excited about this book too because I have heard some incredible things and it is actually Middle Game by Seanan Maguire. This is a book that I intend to read in January as a buddy read with Sarah who is the person who got the book for me. I do know there's like some prodigious kids in here like some highly powerful kids I think. Meet Roger. Skilled with words, languages come easily to him. He instinctively understands how the world works through the power of story. Meet Dodger. His twin. Numbers are her world, her obsession, her everything. All she understands, she does so through the power of math. Roger and Dodger aren't exactly human, though they don't realize it. They aren't exactly gods either. Not entirely. Not yet. You guys know anything that has to do with deities, gods, goddesses, anything to do with powers is something that I love to read about. This definitely seems like one that I will definitely enjoy. And Sarah says, I love you and your videos. Your live shows give me life. <laughs> Excited to buddy read this from Sarah. Next up, we have a book from a booktuber that I actually adore. This book was actually gifted to me by Mina from Mina Reads. I love her so much and her content. And she actually gifted me Jade City by Fonda Lee, another series that I expressed a lot of interest in that I want to start next year. And the gift note literally says, Hey Mel, I hope you decide to stand Hilo and his nipple rings. I had no idea Hilo had nipple rings, but there is no choice for me left but to stand. And I'll just read the little synopsis at the back. It says, Stylish and action-packed, full of ambitious families and guilt-written loves, Date City is an epic drama reminiscent of the best classic Hong Kong gangster films that takes place in a fantasy metropolis so gritty and well-imagined that you'll forget you're reading a book. I know this book has a lot of familial dynamics. Again, we've been over this. I'm super repetitive with that, but I absolutely love that. I know the book also has a lot of themes of magic with consequences that I don't think I read enough about. I think magic and books are just magic and whatever happens, happens, but I definitely am interested in seeing how that's gonna play out in this book. And I know there's like a war brewing and it's just like action packed. I know there's very little romance in this, but as long as the story is very interesting, I am here for it. And honestly, thank you, Mina, for getting this for me. Another book that I am really excited about, only because Aaron, Miss Booked and Busy here on BookTube, has been raving about this book nonstop, and she actually got it for me from my wish list, and it is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Evan Winter, right? Yeah, Evan Winter. Did we know or did we not know when I mentioned Aaron that it was most likely gonna be this book? Absolutely yes. And the gift note from Aaron says, congrats on hitting 4K, my darling. I hope you love this book as much as I did, and I do hope to love this as much as you did, because I know Aaron truly lives for the Rage of Dragons. A world caught in an eternal war, one young man will become his people's only hope for survival. And that's literally all it says. It, it's just that. And you know what? I stand me a good, very simple, doesn't give anything away type synopsis. I'd rather go into this fairly blindly so as to not build any expectation. I didn't know this started as a self-published book. That is actually quite interesting. So thank you, Aaron, for getting this for me. Another book that I mentioned fairly recently that I was very intrigued by, and that was definitely on my my Raider from my holiday gift guide video and it is actually the only good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. The cover is actually textured like the antlers. Can you hear that? As I've stated before, I really want to diversify the way I am reading in 2021. And one of my goals within that goal is actually to read more indigenous authors and more indigenous stories because I actually haven't read any of them in literature. And so the fact that more are going around, it just really intrigues me. I just really want to get into them. And this seems like a great place to start. It says, seamlessly blending classic horror and a dramatic narrative with sharp social commentary, the only good Indians follows four American Indian men after a disturbing event from their youth puts them in a desperate struggle for their lives. Tracked by an entity bent on retribution, these childhood friends are helpless as the culture and traditions they left behind catch up to them in a violent, vengeful way. I feel like I said that so dramatically. Social commentary is one of my favorite things in books. I think when an author can really just weave very expertly social commentary and important themes in their books, I really just love to read that. And it does give it a level of complexity and just layers to the story that otherwise it wouldn't really have. And the gift note says, hi, I recently found your channel and just love it. More than happy to support amazing creators like you. Thank you so much. I'm excited about this book too, so I'm excited to see what you think. Happy holidays. 
from Brandy. Thank you so, so much for getting this for me because I am definitely ready to read this. Not only that, but my brother actually wants to read this too. He said, oh, that's the cool book. That's the book I want to read. So I know he'll definitely be following along with me as I read this one. Whoever did this, the mysterious person who decided to do this, thank you so much because this person got me Saga Volume 3 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. I have read Volume 1 and 2 very recently and I was expressing my interest, like my desire to just continue building my collection of Saga all the way to the end because I am loving this graphic novel so, so, so much. And the gift note literally says, I have also started and enjoy this graphic novel and I can't wait to hear your thoughts from a viewer. So viewer, Thank you so, so much for getting this for me because the second volume ends in a cliffhanger and I was so very desperate to get to this one. And when this got here, I was like, wait. So thank you so much. I definitely want to expand my collection of graphic novels. So this is definitely most appreciated because I was also really, really excited about this one. And they got me Fence Volume 1. And this is by C.S. Packet, Joanna the Mad, Joanna La Fuente. So thank you so much to Lisa for getting this for me. The gift note says, let me just grab it. Hi, Melanie, gatekeeper extraordinaire. I told you I would get you to enjoy from Lisa. The whole gatekeeper thing was like a joke that I started on Molly's live stream, but never have asked for graphic novel recommendations. This is one that always goes around. And I do know we follow this boy. I'm guessing we follow this one in particular who's on the cover. And his name is Nicholas, and he is actually the illegitimate son of a fencing champion. And I believe, don't quote me on that, I think in order to prove himself worthy of his father, he enters a fencing school? Yeah, after getting accepted to the prodigious King's Row private school, Nicholas is thrust into a cutthroat world and finds himself facing not only his golden boy half-brother, but the imbittable, mysterious Seiji Katayama. I'm just thrilled to jump into another graphic novel, especially this one. Like, I feel for some reason like anything to do with illegitimate sons kind of like, I don't know, it's interesting. It's like intriguing to me. Don't ask me why. And I've never read anything revolving around fencing, but fencing was also something really big while I was growing up because there was a fencing club at my school. I never got into it, but I did see people going around doing that. Words truly escaped me with this one. And Kira has actually gifted me five books, which is more, more, more than enough. Again, y'all don't even have to get me anything with the fact that you would go out of your way to get me five books. First off is one of the first books that I'm definitely gonna tackle in 2021. I am just so excited for this one. And it is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I have been meaning to read this book for the longest time now. And and I know Kristen, again, my girl, Books and More with Kristen G, absolutely adored Grown, so that hypes me even more to start this. And I know this book explores the truly dark side of the music industry, and I think this is inspired on the R. Kelly case too. So we follow Enchanted Jones as she is thrust into this new world of fame and parties and drinking and drugs. And I believe at some point she enters an abusive relationship with a really big artist by the name of Corey Fields in this book. And I'm just really interested to see how that that's gonna play out in this book. How Tiffany D. Jackson is gonna navigate that world which is so very toxic and so very dark for some people, especially with taking inspiration on something that happened in real life and something being so sensitive. I'm just very curious to see, again, how the navigation on that theme is gonna happen in this book. Also, again, along the lines of I wanna read more diversely next year, I love how Kira went out of her way to get me books that I'm really interested in that are diverse. So thank you so, so much for doing that. I appreciate that so much. Like I, again, don't have have any words. The next book she got me is actually The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. But I know this is a lot of people's favorites. Everyone that has read this book has adored this. And I've talked about this before. Hard-hitting contemporaries are my favorite kind. And so anything like this that deals with very important themes and issues and circumstances, I will just absolutely be there for. And this says, 16-year-old Star Carter moves between two worlds. The poor black neighborhood where she lives and the fancy suburban prep school she attends. The uneasy balance between these worlds is shattered when Star witnesses the fatal shooting of her childhood best friend, Khalil, at the hands of a police officer. Khalil was unarmed. When it becomes clear the police have little interest in investigating the incident, protesters take to the streets and Star's neighborhood becomes a war zone. What everyone wants to know is what really went down that night and the only person alive who can answer that is Star. And the gift note says, Hi Mel, I've been super appreciative of your content over the past couple of months. You've motivated me to read more 
and I love tuning into your lives. Keep doing what you're doing, girl. Again, this is definitely a book that I already know I'm gonna cry in. Like I just, reading that synopsis, I just, I'm getting emotional. The next book she's gotten me is actually Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the only Brown Sisters book that I was missing because of course, Eve Brown is not out yet. And this is like a fluffy, steamy adult romance. I'm definitely excited about that. I don't exactly know what happens in this one. Her plan is simple fake a relationship. I love that trope. Seduce Saf behind the scenes. I'm sold. I'm sold. And I also know love interest I think is Muslim. I may be wrong, but I absolutely love the representation all around with this one. So again, super, super excited to dive in. The next book that Kira again, has gotten me, is actually Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. I am so excited to get into this. I actually read um, Vicious pretty recently and I gave this a 4.5, but I have five star feels with this one because this one does introduce a new antagonist and we follow a game of cat and mouse, which is one of my favorite dynamics to read about. There is Victor and there is still Eli in this book and I've just heard incredible things about Vengeful. I think maybe this one out of the two is a little bit more polarizing. I honestly feel like this book is gonna be even better than the first one. So I definitely am hyped for this one. And Kira says, I hope you enjoy these books and I can't wait to see them on your beautiful shelves. And the last book that Kira got me is actually one of the books that I want to read the most as well because the synopsis makes me tear up. It's actually The Black Kids by Christina Hammond Reed. And this actually got here pretty recently because apparently Kira got this for me because of the 24 hour readathon that we did. Congrats on completing your 24 hour readathon, Miss Girl. And thank you so, so much for getting this. Los Angeles, 1992. Ashley Bennett and her friends are living the charmed life. Everything changes one afternoon in April when four LAPD officers are acquitted after beating a black man named Rodney King half to death. Suddenly, Ashley is not just one of the girls. She's one of the black kids. Her world splintering around her, Ashley, along with the rest of LA, is left to question who is the us and who is the them. I am just really excited to read this one and I also didn't know that this came out this year, I believe. I don't know why I thought this book had come out in 2018. Definitely super thankful to Kira for getting this for me because this was definitely very, very high on my TBR. This is probably gonna be one of the books that I'll treasure the most because it comes from one of my favorite booktubers and somebody that I've been talking to a lot recently and I just appreciate how genuine this person is. I just appreciate her kindness. The fact that she's so genuine and she's just so herself is just, I appreciate that so much. And I am talking about Liv from Olivia Reads A Latte. She actually sent me a strange case of the alchemist's daughter by theodora goss my way i know she loves theodora goss anything gothic live is there for and after researching it and seeing that she just grabs tails and puts it in like a gothic ambiance and then twists it in a way to fit her own story i just was really intrigued by that and i again don't know anything about this book i'd rather go in blindly she says now you have no reason to not read this i'll be awaiting the reading vlog from olivia so i will most definitely be including this in a weekly reading vlog once I get to it. So thank you so, so much, Liv, for getting this for me because you certainly didn't have to and I hope you enjoyed your gift too. Another book that I was really anticipating reading and the fact that one of you got it for me was just incredible. Somebody recommended that I read this in a Latinx reading vlog because it does take place in like the pre-Columbian period when it is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This cover though, the cover of this book is just the foiling. Look at that. Ooh, when the light hits. Mm. And this is actually also gifted from a mystery person and I don't know if it's the same person who got Saga for me but it says this book intrigues me and I hope you enjoy it from a viewer. Thank you, a viewer. I don't know if you're the same viewer or a different viewer, but whoever you are, thank you. <laughs> Once more, there is the element of gods and deities in this book that I deeply enjoy to read about. Again, I just feel like it adds a level of conflict and complexity to the story that always ends up messing up like with the characters and I just love to read it. Like I just love to see that whole thing play out. And it says, a god will return when the earth and sky converge under the black sun. Crafted with unforgettable characters, this epic adventure explores the decadence of power amidst the weight of history and the struggle of individuals swimming against the confines of society. So again, we have that element of societal construct and the commentary for it in the most original series debut of the decade. Of the decade? That's a really strong claim. I know Kay from I Love Books OK loved 
Black Sun. And if they loved it, I have a lot of faith that I will love this too. And there's just like spaceships and it's like sci-fi fantasy. We got more books from Miss Diana because these actually got here super late. I know Diana got me these books for when I finished my November 24 hour readathon, but they got here super late. I don't know why my PO box is doing it. Sometimes it just takes a while for them to get here. But Diana actually got me three more books and you already saw the first one. So let's get into it first. She got me In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. And in my plans, I did have like a Christmassy reading vlog. However, I don't know if I'm gonna end up doing it because it's already like super late in the month when I'm uploading this. It's already gonna be Christmas day. So I don't know if I'm gonna get to make that vlog before the year is over. But whether or not I do it, I do know I have some wintry Christmassy reads that I can still get to in January. Or if not, I'll get to next Christmas. But this is definitely one that maybe I'll read before the year is over because it is fairly short It is Christina Lauren. It's like an adult romance and those read very very quickly And I really love the Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren So I have faith that this one will be maybe as good as that was This book is a Groundhog Day situation in which the girl, what's her name? Maylene Jones keeps reliving the same day at her family's cabin during Christmas So I have never really read a book that includes that Groundhog Day element, but I am very intrigued by books that include that dynamic. So I'm definitely excited for this one. Again, adult romance set in the holidays. It seems like a very lighthearted, fluffy read, and we all need that during the holidays. The other book Miss Diana got me is actually The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, and I really want to get into Erin Morgenstern's work next year. This and The Starless Sea are both books that intrigue me. I love me some lyrical writing. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. That's why a lot of people end up not liking Erin Morgenstern's work, but I think as long as you know that the writing is lyrical, which I have heard left and right, if it is for you, then it'll be a good fit. Just keep in mind that the writing style is probably gonna be different from what you're used to. And all I know is that this centers in a circus, and that's all I know. This says, the circus arrives without warning, but behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway. A duel between two young magicians. I didn't know there was a duel in here and there was magic. I did not know that. Celia and Marco, who have been trained since childhood expressly for this purpose by their Mercury instructors. I'm definitely hyped for this one. Like, I think anything that has lyrical writing, I am deeply intrigued by, especially after reading Addie the Rue. I have found that that lyrical style is something that I really enjoy in books, so I cannot wait to dive into this one. Thank you so much, Diana, for getting the Night Circus for me. And the last book that Diana got me, again, no words beyond me. You guys are just seriously the best. And she got me The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Now, my intention with this book was actually to buy it myself and read it during December, but with the way that my December TBR is going, that's really not gonna happen. So I'm definitely gonna be saving this one for Polarthon, which is gonna be a week-long readathon hosted by Jade, JD Ray Reads. So I know this is definitely one that is very polar. I think it is Russian inspired, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm definitely gonna save this for that. And I believe that's during February. And this says, winter lasts most of the year at the edge of the Russian wilderness. Above all, Vasya loves the story of Frost, the blue-eyed winter demon. Wise Russians fear him, for he claims unwary souls. Fiercely devout, Vasya's stepmother forbids her family from honoring their household spirits, but Vasya fears what this may bring. All I need to know to dive into this book, Russian inspired, it's snowy. I feel like it's definitely gonna be very atmospheric. There's also that element of like the spirits and evil and demons, which I didn't know this book included like at all. So I'm definitely gonna save this one for Polarthon so I can read it then because if I burn this out before then, I'll have no books to read during Polarthon. Along the lines of Polarthon, somebody got this for me and it has to be somebody that I know because this book came from Blackwell's which is a UK bookstore so I don't know if this was Molly because I the only person from the UK that has my PO box address is Molly. Could this have been Jade? I'm not really sure but they got me Frostheart by Jamie Littler so thank you so much for getting this for me. Jade if this was you I'm gonna text Jade actually and I'm gonna be like was this you because I feel like this would definitely be Jade. Whether or not it was Jade I will definitely be saving this for Polarthon. And there's actually illustrations in here. Ah, oh, that's so cute. I'm excited. I don't know who illustrated this. Wait, does Jamie illustrate his own books? That's actually 
cute. And I literally don't know anything about this book besides the fact that everyone loves it, and that's why I added it to my wish list. Far out in the coldest part of the monster-infested snow sea, Ash waits for his missing parent, with only his grumpy Yeti guardian for company. When an accident reveals that Ash has amazing magical powers, he's whisked aboard the Frost Heart, an explorer's lay with a daring crew who needs his help. This just really sounds like there will be a found family aspect, which I really love to read about, especially in middle grades. Like, that's super cute. I feel like I'll fly through this because the font is also really big. It has illustrations. And I know people are always shook with the endings of Frost Heart 1 and then the second one. So I cannot wait to dive into these. The covers are actually stunning. I think this was maybe Jade, but thank you. Thank you so much. I never thought somebody would get this for me. This is another series that I really want to start in 2021. And I just, I'm so ready. Thank you from the bottom of my heart because, okay, this is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. And this book, y'all are not ready. Are y'all ready? Look at the foiling. And the gift note says, Merry Christmas, Mel. Love your channel and your amazing personality from Jessica. Thank you so much, Jessica, for getting this for me. And Merry Christmas to you too. I hope you're having a good time. And Jessica did tell me that she loved the book. So I'm definitely, oh wait, there's spoiling. Oh my God, under the light. But just knowing the fact that she loved the book hypes me even more. I know this is a lot of people's favorites. So I'm definitely ready to dive into this one as soon as possible. This is like a fantasy, sci-fi, dystopian. It's like a mix of everything I feel. Because in this book, we do have Cyan London, which is very similar yet different to the one that currently exists. And we follow Paige Mahoney, who works in the underground of Cyan in London. Her job as a clairvoyant, which are completely forbidden in this world, is to find information and break people's minds. One night, she is attacked and swept away to the city of Oxford, which is a city that has been kept secret for 200 years. And there she will meet, I believe his name is Jack? The fact that I know so much about this already. Oh no, I mean, I'm, that's probably a lie. It's to the care to the warden. Where did I get that his name was Jack? She is assigned to warden who is like, the, I don't know, a very important figure there. He will teach her all the ways and he will like make her do some things that she is like not that willing to do. I'm just saying, calling it right here. If this is a romance between these two people, I'm here for it. If it's not, I'm gonna go in a corner and cry and I just hope we get a good romance. I asked Molly because Molly loves this and Molly was like, I won't tell you anything. So I guess I'll just have to find out when I dive in, especially with the release of The Mask Falling. Definitely, definitely need to get into this. This next book I was really excited to read because I'm just here for all the drama, for the messiness of like the royals and like the heirs and everything and it is actually American Royals by Catherine McGee. I don't know why I always want to say Catherine McPhee but that's a singer. She's on Broadway all nothing to do with books. American Royals follows that fictional scenario of what would have happened if instead of the US becoming a democracy it would have been a monarchy and George Washington would have been crowned king instead of elected as president. And we follow his descendants now who are trying to navigate this very complicated world. We follow Beatrice who is very close to becoming the first queen from the US. And then we follow her brother and then his twin sister if I am not mistaken. And there's just like a bunch of drama and romance and it just seems incredible. And this was actually gifted to me by Deja. It says, I love you. I hope you love this book because the drama is amazing. We live for the tea from Deja. I've already said this before but this reminds me of that one show. I can't remember the actor that was on Narnia, but the main guy, Peter, whatever his name is in real life. Oh wait, William, William, William something. William Mosley? Is that is that his name, William Mosley? He had a TV show on like E! Royals, The Royals. It was something similar to this. And that show was hella good. Like the drama was like chef's kiss. It was impeccable. And this book is giving me the same vibes and I am here for that. We are down to the last few books. I am glad I have done this in a timely manner because I was concerned by how this many books. Thank you for sticking all the way to here because it is a lot of books. And the next book I'm gonna haul is actually Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. So now I have two Tiffany D. Jackson books when I had none before this haul. And this was actually gifted to me by the lovely Christine from Editorial Edge. And Christine says, Merry Chaotic Christmas, Melly Mel. You know I love this book, so I had to gift it to you because I love you too. Wishing you the happiest of holidays, sis, from Christine. And when I opened this, I knew this was from Christine. Like I added this to my wish 
wish list because of Christine. And again, I truly don't be knowing much about this book besides the fact that Christine loved it and that was like all I needed to add this to my wish list. This is the story of how my best friend disappeared, how nobody noticed she was gone except me, and how nobody cared until they found her. I didn't know this had like a mystery element to it. Wait, hold up. Okay, wait, wait, wait. This just grabbed my interest. But Monday's mother refuses to give Claudia a straight answer, and Monday's sister, April, is even less help. I genuinely had no idea this was gonna be a mystery. I thought this was gonna be maybe along the same lines of like the hate you give or like grown, but this is totally not what I was expecting. Now I'm hyped about this book even more because you guys know I am definitely always looking more into mysteries and thrillers. I love to play detective as I read, and the fact that it is being told from the perspective of somebody that was close to the person who disappeared, I just am intrigued. Like, do they find her? Is she still alive? Like, what? Oh my god! Like, I just... I'm ready for this book. Oh my god. What happens if I just binge read these books in January? We have a few books from the lovely, lovely Melissa who did not have to get me these three books at all. In fact, she'd gotten me one book and that was more than enough and then two more books came in the mail and I have them right here. And as you can see, you already saw the first one. And the first one is actually a sci-fi, which if you guys saw my video, I think I mentioned this in the holiday gift guide, if I'm not mistaken. And I am definitely in the mood right now for sci-fis, but more particularly, this interested me because it does involve first contact with aliens. And when I first heard that, I was like, I'm sold. I do not need to know anything more. And it is actually To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. If you guys follow me on Instagram, then you'd know I did like a makeup look inspired by this book. And that was actually like my comeback to Instagram to like officially merge my two accounts. And Melissa did that, okay? Melissa's the one that made that happen. And it says, Merry Christmas, Mel Klaus. You are the sweetest person to serve all the gifts. Enjoy your gift from Melissa. Thank you so much. I truly feel undeserving of all of this. This is just, again, overwhelming because y'all are just the sweetest people ever. But the back of the book says, space holds countless secrets. She just found the deadliest one. I don't know if the main character is also Latin X, but her name is Kira Navares, and that sounds pretty Latin to me. And I do know we follow the main character again, Kira, and she finds something that she was not meant to find, I believe. And once she touches that, she has potentially started a war between worlds. And first contact is not exactly what she thought it'd be. So definitely want to tackle this one soon. Again, it's sci-fi. It is a chunker. Like, I feel... I mean, I may be wrong, I think. Oh, yeah, it has the Bible thin pages. I love Bible thin pages. I'm not even gonna lie. They are awesome for annotation. They look hella pretty. It is 825 pages, so definitely a bigger one, but we love big books in this house. Crescent City, oh, I love that it has the same Bible thin pages as Crescent City. That is a joy to annotate. It's like underlined. And then the other two books she got me are actually the first two books in the Deva Bat trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. The first one being City of Brass and the second one being The Kingdom of Copper. The gift note for City of Brass says, I really hope you like this book. I enjoyed it so much. I'm enjoying your life sprint on YouTube. Love you, Mel. From Melissa. From one Mel to another Mel. Again, Merry Christmas and thank you so, so much for being just so generous. And I'm just ready to start the series in 2021. I did include this in the series that I wanted to read next year. And now that I have the first two, I just need to get myself the third one so that I can binge read the series. And I don't know, but if y'all want a reading vlog, let me know because I'd definitely be down to making a reading vlog happen for y'all. I love binge reading series, so definitely be down for that at some point of 2021. And I do know in these books, we follow a con woman by the name of Nari. Yeah, Nari. See, I remember that, Nari. But one day accidentally, Nari ends up summoning the spirit of a Jin warrior. And after being forced to flee, they actually stumble upon the city of Brass called Devabad. And there, lots of magic things will happen and an adventure will set loose, I'm guessing. It says, it's a city steeped in magic and fire where blood can be as dangerous as any spell. A city where old presentments run deep and the royal court rules with a tenuous grip. A city to which Nari is irrevocably bound and where her very presence threatens to ignite a war that has been simmering for centuries. I did not know the war thing. Now I am even more hyped. I don't know why I never read that in the synopsis. How is Nari connected to this? I'm intrigued and I know it's a lot of people's favorites so definitely, definitely hopping into this one as soon as possible. So thank you, Melissa. Now for 
for the gifts that Miss Molly from Mind of Molly has gotten me, I just really want to put Molly in like an indefinite pause from like my wish list. Like, of course, we talk about books all the time, but whenever I mention a book that I really want to read, Molly just silently, like she doesn't even say anything. She just slides into the wish list and then it's here. And I'm like, no, she has gone all out. And these are all books that Molly has gotten me. So the first one is actually The Enchanted Sonata. And this is by Heather Dixon Walworth. I found this book one day browsing for like Christmassy reads because again, I was planning a holiday reading vlog that never ended up happening. But this truly intrigued me because it is a Nutcracker retelling. I've never read a Nutcracker retelling, I feel. Lyra Stahlbaum has her future perfectly planned. Marry the handsome pianist, Johan Kaler, and settle down to a life full of music. But all that changes when Clara receives a mysterious and magical Nutcracker. Whisked away to his world, an enchanted empire of beautiful palaces, fickle fairies, enormous rats, and a prince. Clara must face the magician who uses music as magic and the future she thought she wanted. This just sounds like the perfect holiday read. I just am ready to read this at one point. I think this is self-published actually. And the gift note says, Brandy Sandy told me to get you something as an apology for writing a 1200 page book. He would have bought it himself, but he has poor connection from Molly. And the inside joke from Brandy Sandy actually started with Molly when I was trying to make her laugh one day on FaceTime. Now everyone knows I called Brandon Sanderson Brandy Sandy like completely on ironically. So thank you so much Molly for getting this for me because I'm always down for a good holiday read and again, Nutcracker retelling. I've never read anything quite like it. Another book that I have also read quite recently during my 24 hour reading vlog, which again, I will leave linked down below is The Miracles of the Namiya General Store and this is by Keigo Higashino. Again, I won't be telling you too much about it because I did talk about this book enough in that reading vlog. It is magical realism and we follow three delinquents as they get stuck in a general store. This is translated work. These people actually start corresponding with the past. It's just like a whole dynamic between past, present, and future. It's all really interesting to read about. So if you want to check out my thoughts as I read, I will leave that link down below. The gift note for this says, congratulations and 2000 subs, baby girl. You deserve the world and more. I love you so, so much from Molly. Whenever Molly sends me a book, I just want to burst into tears because not only are the gift notes like incredibly thoughtful, but just the fact that she's always listening and she just wants to see people happy constantly. Along with that, she also got me Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy, a series I have talked about before. I mean, duology, that I really want to start in 2021. My intention was actually to read this during December, but I have massively failed at my TBR. So let's just look past that. But she did buy me Bone Crier's Moon. Give note says, I wanted to get you Spin the Dawn, but it wouldn't let me. But I know you've been talking to me about this too. So I wanted you to have it. Two books for 2K from Molly. It does have like that mating aspect that I love to read about. I love to see that dynamic with characters, specifically when it goes from hate to love, which in this book, apparently so, it's that. We follow Elise, who is a bone crier, and the bone criers, in order to prove their loyalty to their gods, they need to kill the one that they were destined to love. And then on the flip side of it, we actually have Bastion, I think his name is, yeah, Bastion, whose father was actually slain by a bone crier. And so Bastion's only motivation right now is to actually kill the bone criers. And so they both have different motivations. They are both wanting to kill each other. I'm guessing they're actually gonna fall in love at some point. So I am ready for that. I'm ready for that to happen. These books need no introduction. I'm not gonna talk too much about them, but Molly actually also got me Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash, which are the last two books in the Throne of Glass series. So again, with the Sarah J Maas books that I talked about before and these two, I have almost all of them except for Assassin's Blade, which I will be getting soon. So I am so happy that my collection is finally, finally all together. It's coming along and I'm just really really happy about that because as you guys know, I love Sarah J Maas's books. Again, just so thankful that Molly got me the last two books that I needed. And the gift note says, the best thing to come out of 2020 was becoming a member of the Diaz family from Molly. And then Kingdom of Ash, let me just flip the book. It actually says, I love you so much and I know you really want to finish the series. Congratulations on 3K, my love. So again, Molly just truly does more than needed. And I don't think I'll ever speak enough on Molly's kindness. Like she is just out of this world. And then to tie it all up even more, Molly also got me a deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova. Now this book I am super interested in. I do believe it's an adult fantasy romance, so definitely something that I want to get deeper into in 2021. I do want to start reading more fantasy romance because not only do I highly enjoy that, but people constantly ask me for recs in that genre. So I definitely want to like expand my collection and my knowledge in that subgenre. And just look at this book without the dust jacket. Like, oh my god, Elise Kova knows what she'd be doing. This book is a stunning moment. And the gift note for this is kind of personal, so I won't
won't be reading it, but just know Molly also got this for me. And we follow the main character, this woman right here, who has actually made a life out of herself. I believe she has a shop of some sort of like plants or like potions. She has made it like her life to make a business out of it. And the elf king suddenly arrives, I'm guessing, to take her, whisks her away, and they they're meant to like fall in love, marry, either or. I just know that this is a Hades and Persephone retelling and it is also being pitched as a Court of Thorns and Roses type feel. But I know Liv actually loved this book. I know she gave it a four out of five stars. So that definitely gives me a lot of hope of me enjoying this book, so. Definitely excited about this one. And thank you, Molly, for all the books. I'm trying to keep up with Molly, honestly. I'm trying to like, you know, send books her way and like trying to keep up, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> I think we only have like seven books left. So bear with me through this last little bit. And the first book I'm going to show you out of the last few ones is actually The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. <laughs> I've been dying to read this book so, so much. I've been meaning to get this book for forever, but I just honestly have put it off so many times. And I am just so glad, okay? My girl, Jaleesa, from the name's Jaleesa, she'd be listening to me. She was so excited when she got me this book. She's like, I'm so excited for your gift. Like, I know you're gonna love it. You've been wanting to read it for so long. When this got here, this was honestly the last thing I expected Jaleesa to get me. But oh my God, I'm just so excited. And the hardcover is just stunning. With like the red spine, look at us matching with the red. Oh, I'm just so excited about this book. And the gift note says, Merry Christmas, Melon Ball. I'm so grateful for you and the friendship we've created in this community. I hope you enjoy this book, love, from Jaleesa. So I am just, oh my God, so thankful that she got this for me. It has deckled edges too. And I know this is a Christmas Carol retelling. A lot of people have been saying that this book in particular is like a Christmas staple. So I can't wait to get into this. I will most likely be reading this Christmas day. So as I'm uploading this, I'm most likely reading this book. On Christmas Eve, five years ago, Holly was visited by the three ghosts who showed her how selfish and spoiled she'd become. They tried to convince her to mend her ways. She didn't. And then she died. Now she's stuck working for the top secret company Project Scrooge as the latest ghost of Christmas past. So far, Holly's afterlife has been miserable. This year, everything is about to change. I just feel it coming, okay? I feel like this is gonna have a romance and she's gonna be a ghost. And I love watching movies like that. I have never read a book like that, but I feel like that's maybe the vibe of this book. I am here for this. Like, I just, I just wanna read this so bad during Christmas day. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it. How long is this? It's under 400 pages. So maybe, maybe I could read this in one sitting. I don't know. I'm excited about this one for sure. So thank you. Oh my God, I'm butchering the book. Thank you, Jaleesa, for getting this for me. We have another pressy from one of my booktube friends and the way that i just i i had a feeling i had a feeling but when it got here i was like that must have been sid and sid actually got me the year of the witching by alexis henderson i am dying to read this book i know it's like dark fantasy horror we follow witches but in particular we follow the main character what is her name i always forget emmanuel and we follow her as she discovers this journal that the witch is left behind and she finds out that her mother was somehow entangled with the witches and she's gonna have to find out the truths about the church and its history and everything to do with the witches that have been killed off for many many years and i know this has been a lot of people's favorites since it came out and it says like it's a feminist fantasy debut again witches it's something that i've been really intrigued by lately in literature because i honestly don't read enough books that witches are its focal point so definitely want to get a little bit more into that in 2021 and sid says such a good book and i'm so excited for you to read it congratulations on 6k baby girl and Merry christmas <laughs> I love you oh so much and hope your holidays are swell from Sid Sid. Honestly, Sydney, I love you so, so much. Again, Sydney is just one of the kindest, just most incredible people I have ever met. And Merry Christmas to you too. I hope you're having a great time. And then a gift that got here, and I suspected that it was from one of my friends too. It just got here with no gift note. I don't know why, but Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyami, another series that I really wanted to start in 2021. And this actually was gifted to me by Kristen from Books and War with Kristen G. I'm so sad it didn't get here with a gift note though. I did tell Kristen to send me like a screenshot or something so that I could write it by hand and pop it in the book. And the flap says, Celia de Bola remembers when the soil of Orisha hummed with magic. Burners ignited flames, titers beckoned waves, and Celia's reaper mother summoned forth souls. But everything changed once magic disappeared under the order 
murders of a ruthless king, the Magi were targeted and killed, leaving Zeli without a mother and her people without hope. Now Zeli has one chance to bring back magic and strike against the monarchy. I have heard so many people love this book to bits, and I do believe this has Nigerian folklore woven into the plot, or it's Nigerian inspired. I do know I read that somewhere. I hope I'm not mistaken. Oh my god, magic. Magic is forbidden. Somebody's lost their parents. The crown prince is targeting the main character. And now for the last section of this book haul, we have some arcs and a finished copy that publishers sent me. And I'm always super thankful to any publishers that believe in this platform and that send me a book to review. That is always fantastic. So I'm going to show you the four books that I got. The first one is Layla by Colleen Hoover. So thank you so much to Montlake Publishing for sending this my way. We all know how I feel about this book. It definitely wasn't my favorite. I have only read two other Colleen Hoover books and those were just stellar. One was a five star and the other one was a 4.5. This one sadly did not hit the mark for me. Not every book is going to be fantastic. So I was definitely bummed about that. But if you want to hear more of my thoughts as I read and everything, this was a part of another 24 hour readathon that happened in November. First, I will make sure to leave the link down below in the description in case you want to check it out. This is Colleen Hoover's first paranormal romance and we follow Leeds and Layla as they meet and they almost kind of like instantly fall in love with each other. They think they are perfect for each other, that they will be it for each other. And when Layla has a very devastating accident, she unfortunately is not the same as she was before. And so Leeds, in order to trigger something in her that will help her remember exactly who she is and who they were, takes her back to the bed and breakfast where they met. Met. And once they are there, Leeds ends up meeting Willow, who is another guest at the BMB. And Leeds starts having this very internal battle on whom he should help Layla, the girl he has loved, or Willow, the girl he just met. And this was, again, not my favorite book. And I do hope that people who read this book enjoy it more than I did. And then the last three books I actually got from Smith Publicity. So thank you so much to Smith Publicity for sending these my way. They reached out and sent me a selection of books to see if I was interested in reviewing any of them. And these three were the ones that sparked my interest, so I'll walk you a little bit through them, but one of them I've already talked about because it is definitely one of my most anticipated releases for 2021. Said book that I've already talked about is actually Downworld by Rebecca Phelps. This is a sci-fi, and this does talk about multiple timelines and traveling between worlds. It's definitely one of those sci-fis that deeply intrigue me. I don't know if I'll get to it before its release date because I do think it comes out. I mean, it says winter 2021. I just don't know exactly when. I'm definitely a waiting to tackle this one as soon as possible. And I did talk more in depth about this book in my most anticipated releases video, which again, I will leave linked down below in case you want to hear the whole synopsis, because again, I don't want to bore you guys with synopses. And just the whole multiverse, multiple timeline thing has always been something that sparks my interest. So definitely something that seems quite interesting. Another book I got from Smith Publicity is actually Revenge of the Sluts. And this is by Natalie Walton. This also comes out winter 2021. Indeed it does. I just don't know the exact a date, but it says in the back, double standards are about to get singled out. As a lead reporter for the Warrior Weekly, Eden has covered her fair share of stories at St. Joseph's High School, and when intimate pictures of seven female students are anonymously emailed to the entire school, Eden is determined to get to the bottom of it. The synopsis goes on, but I think that's all we need to know in order to be interested in a way in this book. I do feel like this is definitely going to be a hard-hitting contemporary dealing with very important issues. Again, that double standards as aspect sounds very, very interesting because whenever we hear about intimate pictures going out into the light of day, there's always some sort of attack towards the person who took said picture. And I just really am interested to see how the conversation is going to be established and how that's going to keep progressing in the story. So definitely another one that I am incredibly thankful to have received from Smith Publicity because it sounded right up my alley. And then the last book from this haul and the last book I got from Smith Publicity is actually The Brass Queen. I always confuse the name because it has brass in it and I'm like City of Brass, Brass Queen, but it is The Brass Queen by Elizabeth Chatsworth. And this is a tall paperback, okay? It'd be tall, tall. But the back of this says, she knows a liar when she sees one. He knows a fraud when he meets one. Miss Constance Haltwhistle is the last in a line of blue-blooded rogues, selling firearms under her alias, The Brass Queen, has kept her baronial estate's coffers full. But when US spy J.F. Truesdale saves her from assassins, she is pulled into a search for a scientist with an invisibility serum. So this is a mix between fantasy, sci-fi, historical fiction. It seems to have like a little bit of everything, I guess. So definitely what got me was that assassin, secret agent, you know, spy kind of thing that I just, I love to watch in movies. I love spy movies. I love assassins.
fantasy movies and I love when books include that sort of character in them. So having that in this book really excites me because I truly want to see that dynamic between these two characters and if they fall in love, one of them as a spy, oh my god. Oh my god, I am just ready for this. There's also a little bit of like, I guess the secret identity thing that I love to see in books. So just overall, I have, I have hopes for this book. I really think it's going to be a good one. And those are all the books that I have for you guys today. Honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone that sent me a book. I know there's still books to get here, so I will be doing another book haul soon, probably around mid-January to the end of January. I'm still not sure because I want to like space them out. But thank you so much, honestly, to anyone who thought of me and who clicked on my wish list because you guys, I will never stop saying it. I say it mostly on every live stream and every now and again, but you guys are so incredibly generous and you have done more than enough this year. And this is just like the cherry on top. You know, to me, the most important thing has always been to connect with all of you and create that sense of community. And I feel like we've accomplished that. That has just been the thing that has made my holiday season and the thing that has just made my 2020 in a time where everything's uncertain and in a time where everything has just been insane. So whoever you are, wherever you are, I hope you're having a merry, merry Christmas and that the holiday spirit has also been extended to you. This is going to take me such a long time to edit, which is why I decided to film this today. Again, it's not Christmas Day. I would have loved to do an unboxing, but I was just trying to cut down the time because there were so many books. So I am just hoping that you guys enjoyed this video. I know I didn't go too in depth with the synopses, but again, 54 books. If I gave a full synopsis on every single one of these, this video would have been even longer than currently is. And I have no doubt this video is probably going to be like an hour long because a girl be talking a lot. Comment down below if you've read any of these books because I definitely want to know all of your opinions or comment down below what were some books that you got for Christmas or some books that you're looking forward to read in the coming year. Let me know all of that down below. And if you reach the end of the video, make sure to leave down below some Christmassy emojis, whether it's the Santa, whether it's Miss Claus, the Christmas tree, a snowflake, whatever you feel channels the Christmas spirit. Leave that emoji down below because if you stay to the end, you're honestly a real one. Like this video I know is going to be long. So I hope you all are having a great day wherever you are. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, again, don't forget to do so down below for more bookish content. Constantly uploading videos I am sure you do not want to miss, as well as live streaming throughout the week, doing my weekly reading sprints. And you can also follow me on all of my social medias, which are always linked down below. My Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, Wishlist, everything is always linked down below. I also have my link for script and for book of the month, all of the relevant links you can find there. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much. Like you guys have no idea. I hope you're having a great holiday season. Thank you so much for watching, for sticking with me and just being all around the incredible people that I know you are. And yeah, I love you all and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye. Bye guys. Merry Christmas. Goodbye.